some water into a huge 3D body of water that you'll be able to animate your camera to fly over and look at it from different angles. Um, you'll be able to put a, a title or logo above the water um, or add other 3D elements or whatever you want. It's very flexible. It comes with a ton of customization options. And it comes with over 50 different water textures to choose from. So you can make anything from pools to rivers to oceans. And uh, it also includes some bonus effects like splashes and reflections and atmospheric haze. I think it's really easy to use and it looks really cool. So let's get started uh, with the tutorial. Uh, first thing I wanna tell you about is how to open this zip file that you download. Uh, there is a right and wrong way to do it. If you're on a Windows machine, you'll need to right click it and choose the extract all option. Um, otherwise you could get errors when you open the project. And if you're on a Mac, you can just double click it to open it. So then you'll just open the ocean.aep file in, in After Effects. It's normal to get this alert saying that After Effects will convert the project, so just click OK. And the first thing you'll see are some instructions, uh, and there are actually instructions comps like this inside all of the folders. So you can just open those up and uh, read what you're supposed to do. But if you're following along with the video, you probably you won't need to read those. Uh, I'm just gonna go through the three steps here and I'm gonna try and stick to the need to know stuff first so you can quickly make your animation. Uh, and then I'm gonna go over these extra effects in here. So step one, uh, this is where you choose your water texture that you're going to use. Uh, in this water textures folder here, there are over 50 different water textures. Um, you can see that they're in categories. So we've got horizons, oceans, ponds, pools, and rivers. And you can just go through those and uh, pick whatever one you like. You can double click it to preview it. And there's a lot of variety in here. There's different angles, different colors, different levels of turbulence in the water. So there's something here for every kind of project, I think. Um, these clips are all taken from pixabay.com, uh, which is a website that offers stock footage for free under the Creative Commons license. So you're free to use these in your projects, whether they're commercial or non-commercial. Um, and if you have any questions about the licensing, you can go to pixabay.com and, and see what they say over there. And also, if you don't find something that you like in here, you're free to use your own footage as well. You can buy a stock footage clip or shoot something yourself and um, that'll work just as well. Uh, most of these are HD. You can see 1920 by 500 pixels. And some of them are 4K and you can see they've got 4K in the name here. Um, there's a lot more HD clips than there are 4K clips. If you're making a 4K animation, you're not out of luck because you can use an HD clip in your 4K animation and vice versa. If you're making an HD animation, you're, you can choose one of these 4K clips. Um, it doesn't really matter. I would just go through all of them and pick the one that you like the best. And uh, if it's an HD clip, let's find one here. We can use this one. This one's HD, um, so that means we have to put it into the HD folder here. So I'll open that up. Um, there's this comp called put water texture here. So we'll just drag it into there. We can delete the texture that's already in there. And then you're done for step one. These other two comps, these are optional. If you have a background image or footage, you can put it in here. And then the horizon water, that will have uh, this comp in there by default. So it just uses the same texture. This will, I'll show you this later. We'll talk about that. Okay, so step one is done. We'll close all this. Let's go to step two. Step two is shaping your waves. So since I put my clip in the HD folder in step one, then I'm gonna open up the HD folder in step two. And you can see there's this comp called water texture. I'll open that and I'll play it. And you can see it applied this wave shape to the top of our water texture. And if you select the control layer and go to the effect controls panel, you'll see a number of controls that you can use to customize that shape. So the goal here is to match this shape to the water texture down here. Um, so you can increase 
the turbulence amount and the turbulence scale and the detail level, um, how fast the wave evolves and the horizontal travel speed. So uh, right now this is set to a negative number, which means that the, the wave shape is going to be moving to the left. I think, yeah, so our waves actually move to the right. So we would want to try and match that. I'll use a positive number. And uh, I might add more detail to this. And that looks pretty good. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, and the reason that this is cropped on the bottom and the top is because that in our final comp, this texture is going to be tiled. So it's just going to repeat itself horizontally. And in order to hide the seams, uh, the edges get blended together. And that includes the top and bottom edge, which produces a, an unwanted result. If you do see some weird strip of water floating above your water texture, uh, you can just come back to this comp and you can crop it a little bit more. Um, you can also feather the edge here. Sometimes that looks good. Uh, it really just depends on which water texture you choose and uh, what your animation is like. Okay, moving on to step three. Regardless of, of what the resolution was of the texture you chose in step one, if you were going to make a 4K animation, you'd be working in this folder. Otherwise, uh, open the HD folder and open the water main comp inside. And what we're looking at here, uh, if we scroll down, you can see we've got 15 different copies of your water texture. And they're arranged in a row in 3D space. And actually, if I use my camera tool, I can orbit around and we can look at it from different angles. If I keep orbiting, you can see that these are just 2D layers arranged in a row. So the, the first water layer up here uh, is the closest to the camera. And the last one is way back here. And uh, then behind that water layer is your horizon water. Let me isolate that. Uh, the horizon water, if you remember from step one, is whatever you put into this comp here. And by default, it just has this pre-comp in there. So it has whatever texture you chose. Now I, I put this separate comp in there uh, because there are situations where you might want a different texture, particularly if you chose a texture that is a close-up shot of water. That might look a little strange if you're using it as your horizon, since the horizon is supposed to be so far away. So I gave you that option. and. Uh, in fact, in the Water Textures folder, there's this Horizons folder with a bunch of different Horizon shots uh, just for that purpose. And if you do use one of those, you might have to add some color correction to make it uh, match the other water layers in your shot. And the other difference between the Horizon water layer and the other water layers is uh, the Horizon water doesn't have that wave shape at the top of it. So it's just a, a straight edge, like a Horizon should be. And behind your horizon water layer is your background layer. So that was whatever you put into this comp. Um, it'll show up behind everything else. So at the moment, we just have these 15 water layers. And it's really easy to add water layers. You can just select one of these blue layers, or a bunch of them, and then just duplicate them. Uh, so if you go to your Edit menu, you can see what the shortcut is for Duplicate. It's Command-D on my Mac. And I usually drag them down to the bottom. And all that does is it creates more layers and it pushes them back even further in the distance. And you can keep doing that as many times as you want. I usually had about 100 layers in, in those animations that you saw in the demo video. So you can do more or less uh, depending on your patience. The more layers you have, the longer it's going to take to process and to render. I'm going to go back to 15 layers. Keep it fast. Okay, and since we're working in this HD comp, um, by default, all of the textures used in this comp are HD textures. Um, these ones that are in our HD folder from step one. And we talked about how you can use a 4K texture and use it in your HD comp. Um, so let me show you how you would swap those out. And actually, I'm going to open the 4K comp. Let's say we're making a 4K animation and we want to replace the 4K textures with our HD texture that we chose. So what we can do is select all of our water layers, not your horizon water layer, and then open up the step two folder and the HD folder. And 
we want this water texture here, which has uh, the wave shape on it. And we'll select that, and with both selected, we'll hold down the Alt or Option key, and then click and drag that texture onto any one of those layers. And that swaps out the source of those layers. And you can see we've got a bunch of stripes uh, because the pattern is repeating itself. And uh, I'll show you how to fix that in a moment. I'm going to go back to my HD comp. And we can use that same technique to swap out the horizon water or the background. We would just swap those out with one of these pre-comps in the uh, step one folder. Finally, uh, we have this control layer at the top. And again, in the effect controls panel, we've got a ton of controls for customizing our scene. So our first section of controls are these transform controls. Uh, we have scale on the X and Y dimensions. Uh, we have spread. This value is in pixels. So right now, all of these water textures are 300 pixels apart. Um, we have X, Y, and Z position. So th these are actually controlling uh, the position of this control layer here. And all of the water layers are parented to the control layer. So whatever the control layer does, the water layers will follow. And uh, we also have these increase with distance controls, which are similar to these position controls, but they affect the layers more and more the further they are away in the distance. And the next one, this one's really important, add random X position. A lot of the water textures uh, are either darker on one side than they are on the other, or they have a reflection, or they have some sort of identifiable feature so that uh, when these textures are repeated again and again, you start to see a pattern. Um, it may show up as stripes in, in your ocean. So to fix that, you can give them random X position uh, I usually crank this up to about a thousand. And uh, if you don't like how they turned out, you can just enter in a new value into the random seed and it'll give you new random positions here. So that's how you can fix uh, unwanted patterns in your ocean. Uh, next we have rotation. We have X, Y, and Z rotation. You may remember when we orbited the camera to the side, all of the layers were at an angle, so that's this. 45 degree X rotation angle. Um, you can also add X, Y, and Z rotation. They affect each water layer individually, not the control layer. And then we've got the same thing, increase with distance, uh, which can produce some pretty funky results. Um, these work better if you don't have any random exposition. So you can, I don't know, do some pretty creative stuff with that. Uh, next, we have these extend edge controls. Uh, it, every one of these water layers has a CC reptile effect on them. And what that does is it makes these water layers repeat themselves horizontally. Let me remove that rotation. Um, and I'm going to zoom my camera way out and bring the camera up. So now, uh, let me hide this horizon layer. You can see that each of these layers gets wider and wider the further away they are from the camera. Um, if you've got an extend left edge control and a, an extend right edge control, and these hold down shift when you're clicking and dragging these and they'll, they'll move much more. You can see that this uh, control just adds an equal amount to every one of the layers. And then we've got increase with distance which actually affects the layers more and more the further they are away from the camera. So uh, depending on the angle of your camera and where it's pointed, um, you may have to extend these edges. Try not to extend these edges any more than you need to because it will eat into the render time. One more important thing to note about these extend edge controls. With this increase with distance feature, uh, layers can start to get really long uh, if they go pretty far back in the distance, which will happen if you've added a bunch of layers. They can push back really far and they can extend really long uh, to the point where After Effects just can't handle it anymore. So you, as you're adding more and more layers, you may uh, eventually get an, an error message um, that says that the layer exceeds the maximum size. You may have to just click OK a number of times um, 
for as many layers at, that exceeded that limit. And uh, eventually the errors will stop popping up. So then you can just decrease um, these values to an amount that uh, After Effects can handle. All right, our next set of controls are the wave controls. These are easiest to see um, from the right side. So if you uh, go to your 3D view pop up here, you click on that and you can click on right and uh, zoom out a little bit. And so we're looking at the scene from the right side. Uh, here's our camera pointed this way and here are all of our water layers. Um, let me actually duplicate some of these so we have more to look at. Okay. And I'll go to my control layer and um, I'll increase the amplitude. And then if I scrub through, hopefully you can see what's happening here. Um, we have this oscillation of the layers. So they're actually moving uh, up and down in, a, in kind of this wave form. The waves are going toward the camera. Um, and then we've got a number of controls here that we can use to customize that movement. Um, if you don't want that movement at all, just set amplitude to zero. Wave length, uh, that can widen or narrow the, the length of the waves. Um, it's important to remember that wavelength, the higher it is, the more narrow it is. So you would actually use a lower value to widen the length of the uh, waves. Um, frequency oscillation. This one is the speed that those layers go up and down. Um, and each of these affect the other. So if you change this, you may have to adjust this uh, to get the look that you're, you're after. So our next control is Time Shift Random Seed. Uh, I should explain first that all of the water textures in this template are about 10 seconds, but they will loop continuously and seamlessly um, for the duration of the comp, which this comp is 10 minutes long. So in order to uh, keep all of these layers from playing in sync with each other, they've been given a, uh, a random time shift. Um, so each layer is offset a little bit randomly, and you can change the random playback of those by uh, adjusting this value here. Just enter in any different value, and uh, each layer will play back from a different frame. All right, next we have horizon controls. Our horizon layer down here at the bottom has its own set of controls. They uh, These controls up here at the top in the transform controls will not affect the horizon layer. So in order to adjust that horizon layer, you would just go down here to the horizon controls. And you've got all the same stuff, scale and position and rotation. And you can extend the left and right edge as much as you want. The most important thing to pay attention to with the horizon is its Y position. And you can see if I lower that value, the horizon moves up. Um, it's very easy to forget about this horizon layer. And uh, if you adjust these other water layers, they might end up covering up this horizon layer and it's just very easy to forget about that horizon uh, it might be down here and, and you don't even notice it so so just try and pay attention to where it is on the y-axis you typically want it to be just barely visible above that last water layer and next we have the background controls these affect that last layer the background layer uh, you could adjust the background layer just using the transform controls on the layer um, but it's probably easier just to use these controls here uh, when you're doing your other customizations. So that does it for the control layer. Um, I'm going to close this comp and go back to our project panel. Let's take a look at these extra effects. You may or may not use these, and uh, if you don't think you will, then feel free to stop the video now and, and start working on your animation. Um, but if you'd like to learn more, just keep watching. I'll uh, talk about this haze effect first because it's the easiest to apply. I'll open up the haze comp. One thing to note about this haze effect is that you need a control layer and a layer named camera one in the comp where you use the haze effect uh, or it won't work. So your main comp should already have both of these, but in, just in case you rename them to something else, you will need to uh, restore those original names back uh, before you copy the effect over. And then the first thing that you'll need to do is select and copy this haze control layer. And you can just go to your main comp and paste it in there. 
You can put it right above the other control layer, that's fine. And then go back and select the haze effect layer. And if you looked in the, in the effect controls panel, you'll see this tint effect. Just select that and copy it. Go to your main comp and then select all of your water layers, including your horizon water and paste. So what that does is it tints all of the water layers, the color that you choose, and it affects each layer more and more the further away it is from the camera. So the result is the layers sort of fade into the background in the distance. If you select your haze control layer, you can change the color. This water visibility, typically uh, this would be the distance from your camera layer to the last water layer. And you might not know what that is, so you can just experiment with different uh, values here. This value is in pixels. And then uh, maximum tint percentage. If your layer is this distance or farther, it'll be tinted 90%. And then the minimum tint percentage, this is the amount that a layer would be tinted if it were zero pixels from your camera or right in front of your camera. Okay, next we have, uh, we'll do splashes next. Um, I'll open up the splashes comp and play it back. And you can see this has just random splashes, water droplets bursting up from the bottom of the frame. And you can use the controls on the control layer to customize the drops and the splash. And uh, if you select the CC particle world effect on there, you can see the particle producer here. And if you scrub through, you can see how it randomly moves back and forth and changes width to add a variety of splashes all along that bottom edge. Um, if you want to, you can duplicate that layer to get more splashes. Uh, just be sure and offset it about 10 seconds um, so the splashes don't occur on top of each other. So once you've customized those and uh, you have them the way you like it, you can then uh, just drag the splashes comp into your main comp and enable 3D for the layer and then you can position it behind a water layer or wherever you want. Just be sure that when if you drag this into your comp, um, you don't place it in between any of these water layers. Uh, because what that'll do is push back all of these water layers so that there would be a gap in between the layers, which uh, you don't want. So you can just keep this above or below the water layers in the layer order, and then you can still position it. As long as this is 3D, you can still position this in between water layers in 3D space. Another option, if you would rather have these splashes coming out um, from behind all of these water layers, you could open this water texture with splashes comp. Essentially all it does is it combines the texture and the splashes into one comp. So then you can uh, go to your water main comp and you could then replace your water layers, however many you want or all of them. Um, just select them and then do that same alt drag technique where you, you swap out these textures with this one. But a problem you'll run into is that uh, since this texture is so much taller, it's going to appear at a different level height-wise. So one thing you can do, um, just select one of these layers that's close to the camera, and then uh, just mark the height of where that layer is. And you can do that by adding a, a ruler guide. So to make the ruler show up, you can do Command or Control R, and then just drag down from the ruler to create this guide and just put it at the top of that layer. Now we can select however many water layers we want to replace. I'll just do the first few. Hold down Alt or Option and drag that texture on there. So you can see the water texture it must be down here. It came in too low. So we can just, with these layers still selected, we can uh, reveal the position property by hitting the P key. And we'll just drag them all up until that water texture is back to where it was. And then we can unsolo that layer. Okay, moving on to this reflection effect here. This one is a, uh, it's a hairy beast of an effect. It requires a lot of pre-comps and uh, some setup work on your part. And I really wanted to make this a sort of one size fits all copy and paste effect, but it just doesn't work like that. So it's gonna take a little bit of time to set up, um, but it can produce some 